started and I'm Elizabeth Mays and I'm super excited about self-publishing and I'm super excited about sort of the revolution of, that has happened in the ebook industry and the print on demand industry lately that basically would enable anyone in this room to self-publish their books so easily and so affordably. But what really upsets me is that people don't really know how to do this yet. They don't really know that this capability is out there. And so I am trying to be an evangelist to spread the word that you do not need to spend thousands of dollars. Uh, you know, giving them to someone to help you with this process because really you don't need to go through an intermediary, so I'll show you some ways not to do that. Okay, who I am. Um, I started my career years and years ago as a writer, and um, as a writer, I had a lot of great ideas for books that I thought needed to be written. And at the time, I submitted them to the traditional publishing houses, and I got them sometimes some middling interest, but eventually they would say, you know what? I don't think the audience is big enough. I don't think the subject is, you know, right for a mainstream audience. And, and so I got a little discouraged, but I thought, oh, well, you know, I put that thought aside. And then I spent about 15 years as an editor, a professional editor doing different types of editing. Uh, and then I went back to school at the Cronkite School of Journalism and I did their digital media entrepreneurship program which completely changed my life because I was coming in a lot of cases from the print side of things, from the writing side of a thing, and really looking at the technology and the digital side of things really changed my life. Uh, after that, um, I decided in the last couple years, now I do web marketing, I'm actually for the Cronkite School during my day job, uh, and in that process, uh, I decided to experiment with self-publishing because I wanted to write some of those books uh, that you know hadn't been written yet. So I did a couple test books just on something that I could write about pretty quickly. I did a nano project last two years ago actually. And I was able to get those into the bookstores really easy uh, using a platform that basically had no friction in that process at all and was really affordable. And so I began telling people about this platform and telling people how to do this. And then at a certain point I said, you know what? Um, <laughs> you should probably hire me to do this for you um, from time to time. Um, and so that's what happened. So I'm also, full disclosure, the marketing manager for Pressbooks, uh, which is a platform that will help you self-publish your book. Uh, but I'm also going to show you some other options. Can I just ask yeah. a quick question? Mm -hmm. So what, if you self-publish, can you sell your book for the same amount of money as you can sell your book for whatever price you want to, and that's the really exciting thing. Now, will people buy a $99 book? I don't know, you know, but you can set your price at whatever you want it to be. Because I was under the impression if you self-publish it, you have to, like, give it away. Well, that's, it depends on the market, so that's the, that's the question. You can set the price at whatever you want, but what will people pay for that book? And what's the best price to set it at so that they'll buy more copies of it? So we'll talk about that as we go on. Um, so my feel, my philosophy is that ebooks are the new blogs, but unlike blogs, ebooks are something you can monetize. So nobody is going to pay, you know, 99 cents for your latest blog post, or even a dollar 99 or 2.99. You're not going to be able to put a paywall on your blog successfully. But in terms of an ebook, you can actually turn your blog into an ebook, sell it in one of the ebook stores, and then you can actually monetize that. And it's pretty simple to do that. Uh, so that means that basically you don't need anyone to agree to publish your book. You don't need anyone to put effort into publishing your book. And you definitely don't need to pay someone to consult with you, you know, thousands of dollars to show you how to do this. One of the things that a mentor said to me at the Cronkite School uh, when I was there was that entrepreneurship is not about selling your, selling something that you have to do every time you make the money you make for that time. That's small business. He said entrepreneurship is selling, is creating something once and then selling it numerous times without any piece of you inside that transaction. So basically, ebooks, you're putting them in the bookstore, you wrote it once, and then lots of people can buy it and there's no interference. You don't have to sell it to them every time. So that's why I got interested in the ebooks as well. Um, nowadays, you know, there's there used to be a real stigma around self-publishing and there used to be real in order to publish a book 15 years ago, you really did have to go through a publisher. It wasn't just something that the ordinary person could do. And even maybe three years ago, it wasn't so easy because it would really, ebooks are like websites. So you would need a developer, you would need a coder, and you would need a graphic designer for the print version. So you would need some expensive services in there, but there's a lot of platforms that have come to be where you no longer need that. Uh, one of the things we've learned um, over the last 10 years or so is about the long tail. 
Uh, Chris Anderson wrote about how content creators like musicians, bloggers, they're able to reach a niche audience that they couldn't have ever connected with before the internet. And so ebooks are now happening in the same way. Okay, so I want to give you in 40 minutes, which is pretty ambitious, I'm going to give you a really fast fly over, so bear with me as I go pretty quickly through this. But I want you all to be able to leave here and do your own book really quickly, really affordably, uh, and without having to pay someone thousands of dollars to get in the middle of that process for you. Um, yes, you can pay some of thousands of dollars to do all this for you, um, but I really believe that it's important not to get overcharged for the wrong thing or to be paying for basically air. There are some tasks that maybe you should invest a couple hundred bucks here, a couple hundred bucks there uh, in if you're going to do a professional book, but definitely you do not want to be paying someone like an author services company for like a four to ten thousand dollar package. Um, one of the great statistics that came out from Bowker this year is that 93% of books only sell 100 copies. Now let's say that in some miracle you were actually selling those 100 copies at $8.99, not $2.99 or $3.99 or something like that, and you're taking, you know, 35% of that, you know, at the very most that's four to $5,000 if you're one of those books. So you don't want to be spending $4,000 or $10,000 to publish a book unless you, again, are knowing that it's going to be successful. This is a cool thing you can really do on a speculative way. This should be an experiment. This should be a marketing tool for you. So you don't want to get that far in just to do something that you can do yourself, in my opinion. Okay. So who should do this? Uh, there's a couple types of people, and some of you in here may already own your own business. Uh, if you want to do a book as a marketing tool, I've heard so many people today already say that they have books. So this is for you. Uh, and again, you probably don't want to spend thousands of dollars doing a marketing tool that might be a free download on your website or a free giveaway at your talk or your conference. Uh, so that's good, uh, one, one group. Another might be authors who are really, 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 really good, but really, 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 really new. Or they have a topic or a book that is going to be so small of an audience where a publisher is not going to take a chance on them right off the bat. Or maybe they've even been told that as they search for publishers. No, 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 no. Um, it's good for them because they're able to connect with that audience, and they can also, if they're successful at that, they can also prove that they have an audience, and then sometimes a traditional publisher will take a chance on an author who's demonstrated that by self-publishing the first time. Uh, on top of that, a lot of people just don't want to wait two years to get their book published nowadays, and why should we? Why should we work with a legacy publisher who is going to work with you for two years, demand a bunch of revisions you may or may not agree with, and you know, ultimately, you're waiting and waiting and waiting on something beyond your control. So if you don't like that process, you can bypass it. Uh, vanity books, there is a viable reason for, for instance, your dying uncle to write down his autobiography. That is valid. Um, and knowing that it's not going to sell probably more books than outside of your family or outside of people with a special interest, that's okay. This is a great venue for that where you aren't going to have to, you know, go through the it never got published or something like that. So this is something where you have control and I love that. Okay, so this is my opinion as the gatekeeper. I firmly believe this. And I and I, I say that in two ways. Not just those traditional legacy publishing houses who publish books, but also all the intermediaries and author services companies out there who are trying to charge you thousands of dollars to do something you could do yourself. And F means free? F means <laughs> You know what it means? <laughs> yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. good. <laughs> okay, so the one thing you need to know to preface this conversation is that ebooks are websites. So basically, anything you wouldn't do on a website, you don't want to do it in an ebook, okay? Complicated things like laying out charts and tables, still complicated in an ebook. Um, but nowadays, there are platforms out there where you don't need to hire a developer and pay you know, thousands of dollars or a graphic designer for the print edition. Um, and the great thing, too, is that the thing is, if you did want someone to manually do your ebook, it would take a lot of time and it would take a lot of effort and they would have to charge you for that. So that's why. That would be a big expense, but it would be like you know hiring someone to do darkroom photography or like chiseling on stone or you know something like that that you can now do with a computer <laughs> or a digital camera. You don't need the end user is never going to know that you actually develop that photo in a darkroom, um, and the difference in quality is not going to be all that big between a really nice digital camera. So you're doing too much work, and that's where a lot of people are spending the time and getting frustrated. Okay, so in order to publish an ebook, you need a Mobi file for the Kindle store uh, for Amazon. 
Uh, you need an EPUB for pretty much every other ebook store. And then if you want to also do print on demand, which I highly recommend, uh, because print on demand is basically enabling you not to make another huge investment in your book. Uh, that you then have to pay off. So in the old days, you know, five years ago, you buy 300 copies of your book, there's a minimum quantity, and then you have to personally like sell them to people. And that's, again, putting yourself in the middle of a transaction that can now be computerized. Uh, so print on demand means you put your book up in CreateSpace or another provider similar to that, and the user can buy it. They can buy one copy, and CreateSpace will print one copy at a time every time someone orders it, and CreateSpace will even ship it to them. So again, you're not in the middle of shipping a book every time someone orders a book from you. So I think it's well worth, you know, the little commissions that CreateSpace um, or Kindle or anybody else take. Okay, so yes, um, a lot of people, yes, you can actually use a Word document nowadays to get into things like the Kindle and the ebook stores, but it is a terrible, terrible idea. It is awful. The Word docs, a, most of you are probably coders of some kind, and you know that Word is evil. Because on the back end, <laughs> there's all this ugly yeah. stuff that if you cut and paste stuff into you know, a website, it would be like, mm -hmm. awful. You know, and so, so you can't do that. Um, you, you can do that, but you shouldn't do that. <laughs> OK, so there are some old ways um, that you can convert files. And I've actually been giving this presentation for years. Um, and so these are some of the older ways that people used to do this. Uh, but they're long, they're arduous, they're time consuming, they're discouraging. Um, some of them require more technical knowledge. And I really wanted to make this accessible to people who are writers, because writers are the ones hopefully writing books. And writers aren't always developers. And writers aren't always graphic designers. And so the things that I'm going to show you are going to enable the ordinary writer to do an ebook post. OK. Um, there are, in all fairness, there are other online ebook platforms in addition to Pressbooks. I still believe it is the superior product, and I'm not just saying that because occasionally um, I do work for them, but I, I genuinely believe that they are the best on the market in terms of charging you a fair price for a value that you need. Um, if you are doing some serious multimedia, though, the exception is Creativist, which is very helpful if you are writing a video-driven book or something that you want to really display on the web. It might be a better tool for you, to be honest. Um, but other than that, barring that, if you're writing a textbook with some images, you, you can easily use Pressbooks. Um, Tableau is coming sort of onto the scene now. They're doing a lot of advertising. They got a lot of venture capital. Um, but really, what Tableau is about, it's almost like a social writing experience. It's kind of, has anyone heard of Wattpad? OK, so Wattpad is another online writing tool where it's very social. Like, you can write a chapter to your, to your book, and your followers can read the chapter before you publish the book, which is like kind of cool. But it's more like a social platform. And Tableau is very similar. So they will export your book to the bookstores for you. But um, in the meantime, while you're writing it, it's really about the social reading other people's stuff and other people reading um, and also when they upload your book, which they only do to a couple bookstores, they then take a percentage of that. And I feel like, you know what, the bookstores are taking enough of a percentage, and it's a fair percentage, and that's great, but you shouldn't be giving more and more and more and more and more chunks of your book away to everyone down the chain when you can do that yourself. Um, also, they don't really do print-on-demand, whereas Pressbooks will output to that instantly as well. And Liberio is kind of new on the market. It'll let you take a Google Doc and make an ebook, but again, it's kind of that less, it's not very user friendly yet, and I can't quite tell that the exports are going to be the quality in terms of the amateur professional look when they get in there. Okay, um, so I'm not actually going to do a hands on tutorial with, with my laptop because there's only a couple things that I wanted to show you uh, in the tool. But basically, there are about four steps to creating a book nowadays if you're going to use Pressbooks. Uh, the first one is to import your text and images, which you can do from an existing manuscript in Word, which you can do from a you know, text document in Text Wrangler, which you can even do by you know, taking, exporting the XML from your blog uh, and then importing that XML into Pressbooks. Uh, so, lot, or you can just write in Pressbooks, which is what I do. I really love um, the ability to organize my chapters. It's very similar to Scrivener, but it's all online. It's all in the cloud. So is I can it work and or Word done? Um, it does. Um, it has. It's basically like WordPress, and you know how there's a text editor in WordPress that lets you get to the HTML and such. You can do that here as well. You can customize your CSS even if you wanted to, but you don't have to. Like the average user isn't going to use that. 
Um, so in terms of, and if you're talking about like sort of the, it'll give you the blank screen too where you don't have to see distraction free and everything. No, I mean, is it able to convert from Markdown? Like it's, it's format. Oh yeah, 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 I can do that. And you can actually, there's some exotic imports and exotic exports, like stuff like you can actually export to InDesign, um, but then that's again, assuming maybe you're a corporation, you've got a graphic designer who wants to go further with it. Um, you can import some from some formats that I don't think the average user would ever use, but there are publishers using it, so there's a lot of that functionality built in there too. So a lot of the author services houses, you know, they may be charging you an arm and leg and then using a platform like this to convert your files. So again, it doesn't have to cost that much. Um, then you basically upgrade. Pressbooks is free to use, uh, but it does have watermarks in your upgraded files um, until you pay a small fee. So to create an ebook in Pressbooks, it's between $10 and $25, which I think is awesome. They're not charging you as you go along, uh, monthly or yearly. It's literally by the book. Uh, and then if you wanted to upgrade that book to a print-on-demand file with no watermarks, that would be $100, which again is well worth it. Um, I also do the promotion, so from time to time we have a discount, uh, so sign up for our newsletter and you'll find out more about deals and discounts, so it'll go down from that from time to time. Uh, then you just click on export and then you have files that you download to your desktop and then you upload them back into the ebook stores and it's that simple. So I'll show you a couple screenshots um, and then also I'll talk about the metadata. The metadata is really important, so a lot of writers may not know what metadata is because again they're not doing a lot on the web nowadays. But the metadata is like your book description, it's all the different things about your book that someone might search for. And a lot of writers, you know, over the years, we were writing for, you know, the human, right? And we're just now learning to write for the computers and the search functions and the algorithms. But you've got to write to the algorithm when you're working on your book metadata. So um, that's a screen where you can also work in Pressbooks. Okay. Um, so Pressbooks works just like WordPress, and so all of you have probably seen a screen like this before in WordPress. It's actually running on WordPress. It was built on WordPress. Um, so it's very, very similar, and basically your chapters are like posts, and you can create chapters and parts, um, and you just essentially write your chapter, or you can cut and paste in your chapter, or you can literally import your entire book from, say, a Word document, although the caveat to that is that you absolutely need to use the styles menu in Word. You cannot be one of those people, and I've met these people where they are like literally, instead of using the styles menu, they are like bolding all their chapter headings and doing crazy funky formatting. And this writers do this, and it's kind of to organize themselves, but use the styles menu and then it will import pretty well. Right, and, and so once you do that, there may be a little bit of cleanup. You can like drag and drop your chapters. You can make sure all the chapters are imported. You can make sure there's no extra spaces. Um, so it does take probably, for an average book, it probably takes eight hours of sort of like perfecting just to make sure that the export is everything it can be. And you don't have to do that, but I highly recommend it. Yeah. I know we came in late. Okay. So what's the name of this software? Pressbooks.com. Okay. Um, and then, and so you can publish, you can create it private, you can make your whole book private or public. Uh, you can also make individual chapters private or public. So you can show like one chapter to a publisher or your friends on the web. Uh, you can actually put the whole book up on the web for free. So you can write your book, and if you just want it to be on a web, like your website, you want to redirect it to a domain or something and have your book up on the web, that's totally free, um, except you have to get the domain and, and do that. Um, but then. Once, sometimes when you publish to Amazon, you know, there are certain levels of Amazon where it can't be published anywhere else publicly or for free. So you wouldn't want to do that um, once you're at that point. Okay, so this is the import screen. It's again, just like WordPress on the left, the whole dashboard, um, you just import. This would be if you were to import your XML file. You can even import from an existing ebook. Like, say you paid someone a lot of money to do an EPUB, and you don't, you want to make a change to it, but you don't want to pay them a ton of money to make that change, or they've gone, you've never seen them again. Um, then you can, you can do it this way. Uh, you can also even scrape HTML, but again, a little bit of cleanup involved in that because it's not going to be perfect. Um, so after you're happy with your book, with your content, or even as you're working along, um, just like in WordPress, you can apply a theme, which is essentially the graphic design for your book. Um, so there's a ton of themes, about 45 of them. I believe there will be some sort of 
you know, business oriented themes coming out next. They have a lot of really cool like horror themes and spooky themes and crime themes and um, classic themes. Uh, they've also got some that are just kind of, you know, romance themes uh, or just that would work for pretty much any book. So that's, this is what's going to control, you know, how are things like chapter headings handled? How are things like subtitles handled? Um, and this is this is where you can change it. You, like WordPress, you can change it anytime. None of them are like premium. You can just literally click on it if you get tired of a theme or you think something else would work better with what you're doing now. Okay. Um, then you click export, um, and then those files you would literally just click. There's a little download button next to each of them. You would download them, and then you would go to the bookstores and you would upload your files in the bookstores. Uh, you can also, like I said, there's some exotic export formats, so you can actually go from Pressbooks back to a blog if you wanted to then put it on a blog um, or to InDesign or some other different things. But generally, the three on the left, the PDF, the EPUB, and the Mobi are the three that you need to get into most of the e-book stores um, and into print-on-demand or print publishing. This is where the metadata lives, and again, I tell you, you know, not to disregard this piece of it because the algorithms for the bookstores will essentially um, help people find your book if they are searching for things, similar topics, similar types of books, but only if you insert the right metadata in your book description, in your book <coughs> title, all of these things. Um, so I actually, I have two books now that I've left in the Amazon store. Originally, I self-published about four books. I took two of them back out of the stores. Some of them I used a distributor to test that out, some I didn't. Um, but I ended up with two books, one of which I put back into the store. I took it out and I put it back after revising it. And what I had found is that I actually have a friend um, at Amazon who gave me not too much proprietary information, but enough of a hint. They were like, yeah, you need to change. Like, it's not working with the algorithm. The searchability isn't there. You did an SEO it. I'm like, ah! Um, of course, right? I'm a writer now. And, and so so I wasn't thinking about that. And so I put it back in with words that people might search for to find similar books in, on similar subjects. And it's been doing a lot better uh, once I did that. Uh, so don't forget your metadata. OK, um, like I said, ebooks are websites. And all, you know, websites look different on different devices from time to time. But ebooks are particularly kind of fluky. Nowadays, you still have to test your ebooks um, and validate them and make sure that they look good, um, especially if you didn't do a lot of cleanup or really check that before you were exporting. Um, so basically, you there's a post that is, that's a little light, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to say. Um, so it's guide.pressbooks.com um, forward slash chapter testing hyphen your hyphen ebooks. And this is actually, it's a blog post by the founder of Pressbooks. Um, it has about eight different ways that you can test an ebook to make sure that it's going to look good on the Kindle Fire, on the Kindle, you know, ordinary Kindle, on different types like the Kobo. So it will go in all the different devices and make sure that your ebook looks the same um, on all of them because different ebook devices will render different elements differently. And the reason you use something like Pressbooks or the reason you hired a coder long ago was so everything was again in a style. So everything is in a CSS style and you know certain things, headings might render differently from one device to the other, but as long as you're using the styles menu, they'll, they'll render nicely enough. Uh, the thing you don't want to do in Pressbooks that you wouldn't want to do in anywhere is not use the styles menu. You still want to um, put like your headers in heading heading one or H2 or, or whatever you want those headers to be. Um, and you also want to make sure if you have images to put those in um, to make sure there's a caption because that'll put them in a div. Uh, and that's kind of something to just, it might get a little too technical, but again, like that saves them from floating around in a way, it fixes them so that no matter what device it is, it's going to render them in a nice way. Okay. Um, so you still need a cover. The one thing Pressbooks does not do is covers, and almost, you know, there's no platform out there that will do your cover for you. And the thing is, you can do a cover for free. Um, so realistically, uh, you could use the Kindle cover creator or the CreateSpace cover creator, but they are really, really, I personally feel like if you're gonna invest any money in your book whatsoever, like the cover is the number one place to spend it. But again, if somebody's charging you, you know, four thousand dollars or something, that's a ridiculous price. So try to get it. You can get something nice done between fifteen to one hundred fifty dollars. 
Um, and excuse the typo, but um, so I'll tell you a couple things I've tried. Um, my first one, I actually hired a friend um, to do the illustration, and then I know enough about Photoshop that I was able to kind of adapt the illustration and make the background where it worked. Um, and then for my print-on-demand one, I forced my husband, who actually has a degree in graphic design, to like fix it. But the challenge with print-on-demand covers, and the reason you should just pay someone to do this, other than your husband, um, is, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I said I'm sorry, I'll never, this is not worth your time. But, um, so the print-on-demand covers are actually sized differently. Anyone's book in this room would be a different size, because it's done by the number of pages in your book and the trim size of your book. And so both those factors make calculating like the size of that cover a pain, and it also, the entire cover includes for a print book, your front cover, your back cover, and the spine in between all in one. And so it's a little more complex of a task for a designer, I would pay someone else. Um, so a couple ways I found that done is um, on Fiverr. Has anyone used Fiverr? Yes. Okay, I love Fiverr, and it's a great place. Uh, there's a, there's a F-I-V-E-R-R dot com. Oh, fine. And there's a one that I you can search for people who do ebook covers or book covers. The one I really like is Pixel Pixel underscore Studio has done really good work for me. I've done two book covers through them since for um, companies that I work for. Um, and then also there's Octagon Lab, um, and they do both the ebook and the print cover for about 150 bucks and give you the files so you're not like hamstrapped to the same person you use. You know, you can you know find someone else two years down the road when you want to issue a second edition yeah. and put that on the cover. Um, so the other great thing is revision. So anytime you want to revise your book, if you're doing it yourself this way, you don't have to go back to you know an author services company and be like, can you please change this one thing on page 23 and can you change this other thing and wait for them to get back to you and say yes, but we'll charge you this much. You just do it. You just make the revision and then you put it out there. Um, and you can reissue books really simply, like in a matter of days in the ebook stores. So no reason not to make revisions if you notice a typo, if you want to update your book, it's awesome. Um, so again, you can do these yourself if you want your cover done yourself, but you, I suggest hiring a professional for that. Um, and these are uploaded separately from your interior files in all the bookstores. Okay, speaking of ebook stores. Okay, so you can choose to be exclusive to Kindle Direct Select, um, and that comes with some benefits, including the ability to do some cool promotions, although you can only do them uh, for about five days every 90 days, so I don't know how useful that is. I haven't found it as useful as I had hoped. Uh, you can also get your book out there to the lending library, which makes it easier for people to pre-review your book, essentially, which will help in um, the marketing of it because the more ratings, the more reviews, the more positive things that you have people saying, the higher book is going to rank in search and the more likely people looking for books on um, similar subjects will find your book. Uh, so that's one advantage. Nowadays, if you're in the exclusive program at Kindle, you're also automatically bumped into Kindle Unlimited. And in Kindle Unlimited, if you haven't heard of it, it's kind of like Oyster or Scribd. Uh, where you pay, people are paying, say, $9.99 a month, and they get access to all the books in, it's almost like Prime, for Prime shows on TV, Amazon Prime, but it's for books. So, like, then, your book is being given away free to members of Kindle Unlimited, and you still get, like, a kickback whenever Amazon wants to give you a kickback, but it's at Amazon's discretion. <laughs> so, again, like, you're losing a little control, you're gaining a little bit of, you know, vir viral potential for spread of your book, because, again, people, like you said, you know, how much can you charge for your book? Well, you can charge anything, but how much will they pay, and how much will they take a chance on it? So, you know, you gotta weigh those um, advantages by yourself. And then the other thing is, you can't put it in all the other ebook stores. And I don't know that that's such a bad thing. Honestly, I originally put some of my books in all the bookstores, and the only one that was really selling was at Amazon. So I don't feel like I was losing anything when I went back to Amazon and did KDP Select, but maybe you do. Maybe you want that right, and that's great. Um, so it's up to you, personal decision. Okay. So ISBNs can be another expense for your book and another complexity, but you don't need them in most cases. Um, a lot of people will want one to sort of add that layer of professionalism or ownership to their book, but basically an ISBN is a number that allows the book industry to track sales of books. 
Um, the I personally think it's also very much of a tax on publishing because in the old days you really did need one to publish and and I think that's you know wrong to have a hundred twenty five dollar tax you know kind of standing in your way of doing that because again that's not democratizing publishing that's still for those who can afford it so. Anyway, uh, you can buy them direct for $125 from Bowker, which owns, they are the only one you can buy an official ISBN directly from that will have you as the publisher on it. Uh, you can also get one for free from a lot of different uh, ebook stores. So basically, um, Smashwords and CreateSpace will require an ISBN, but they will give you one for free. The downside being that they will be listed as the publisher of your book on the ISBN. It's not that bad. Does it matter? Will they ever exercise that right? I don't know. Do you trust Facebook? It's kind of that same argument. You know, what will they do with my data? What will they do with this ownership? I personally don't think it's that bad. Um, you can also buy one from a reseller for about $19.99. Uh, but again, they will be listed as the publisher of your book. Um, do you trust them more than Amazon or, or those people? Maybe. Um, or sometimes there is one little way around this that I found in CreateSpace that I like. If you do the manual upload to your book, it's actually, they have a $10 resold ISBN that lets you list you as the publisher of that book. So again, a very small, I would pay that 10 bucks. I think that's worth Say it. Say that again? Um, in CreateSpace, there's, they'll give you a free ISBN with them as the publisher. Um, or you can you know, buy your own offsite at Bowker for $125. Um, or you can buy those in bulk as well. Or there's a $10 tier where CreateSpace will resell an ISBN to you that you can customize who is listed as the publisher, the imprint, as you. And so that's a good option. Back in the day, before all this tech, I was a self-publisher. Mm -hmm. And they gave me 100 ISBNs for free. Before that whole thing was online and everything. And so this is like... $125 for one ISBN. Yeah, and I think that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Absolutely. And and so personally I do I, I use the ten dollar create space option. Yeah. Um, Amazon won't give you an ISBN for free uh, in the Kindle store, but they'll give you like an Amazon identification number. Um, so you don't really need one to publish there. They'll actually assign you one whether you have an ISBN or not. That's how they do business. Exactly, but but you don't need to. They don't force you to buy an ISBN or have an ISBN because they have this other number. Um, so this is again, you can find this offline. So I'm not going to read these these off. But basically, if you Google, you know, Amazon, you know, Kindle Direct Publishing or, or whatever the case may be, or you want to like get my book in the Nook, um, basically you'll come up with a link that's a link to a dashboard uh, for that particular bookstore. And I highly recommend that you go individually to the, the bookstores and upload your book by yourself. And the reason for that, and I'm sorry, I didn't realize this would be so so light. Can um, we turn on the lights a bit? Um, I don't know, can we? I don't know if we have control. Okay, so you can find this though. This is not uh, this is not like ten layers in. If you just Google publish my book on Node, publish my book on, on Kobo, you will find the same link. So it's not like deep buried knowledge. And what you're gonna need when you go to these links, you're gonna need your interior file or your file your book file, basically, the PDF that you put the Moby. You're going to need your banking information because that's how they deposit your royalties, that's how they report your tax uh, receipts, and then you will also need your cover file for, um, and again, those are two different cover files. One is for an ebook, one is for print on demand. Um, they're different sizes, shapes, everything. Uh, the other thing about the print on demand cover I'll share with you is that you have to compress it a certain way, which takes some effort, so that's another thing to keep in mind. Um, print on demand, um, again, createspace.com, not not hard to find. Uh, they create your book every time someone buys it and they ship it to that person. The great thing about CreateSpace is you can also buy and resell author copies and my book came out at about two bucks a piece. So that's a that's great, you know, and you can resell those for, you know, whatever it was, 20 bucks and then you can keep all that profit. Uh, Ingram Spark is very much like CreateSpace. They're print on demand, you send them your files. The difference being um, they will do a hardcover print on demand. So one book at a time, if you want your book like it's, you know, a crime thriller or something, a John Sanford thing that you want to come out in a hard for, hard, hardback first, you can do that. Um, they do charge a setup fee, which I think is a little annoying. Um, but 
you know, whatever, it's 50 bucks. So if you want hardcovers, that's a good option. Um, okay, um, you can pay someone else to do all this for you, but they're gonna take a cut unless you pay them a significant amount. So I don't think it's worth it. It takes about four hours of kind of fumbling around in the bookstore, uploading your files like the first time. It's worth it not to then be owing someone else um, a royalty. And at the same time, not only are they taking a cut, but they're in the middle when you want your sales reports. They're in the middle when you want your check um, for royalties. So like you don't want that person in the middle because this is really simple. It's it's worth your time to figure it out. Everybody in this room is pretty technical, and I wouldn't I wouldn't get someone else in the middle of that for us. Okay. Um, this is what you would make on a book in the various ebook stores. Um, it doesn't change very often. You can always Google this, but it's how you price your book. The royalty is also a little dependent on that. And I skip one. Um, so, what is the ideal price? Um, there's no answer to that. Um, Smashwords, you know, I joke that I, they can't come up with a real answer to that, but they did do a study, and the study concluded that it was around $3.99. Uh, that sort of sweet spot where people will take a chance on a book, where people will take a, you know, a, a kind of an impulse buy or whatever the case may be, but you have to consider, you know, what is my market? What is my audience right now? Who can I leverage to buy this book, um, to spread the word about this book? And, you know, also how many cuts am I paying to others? Like if you're already a lot of money in, you know, maybe you want to charge more for your book. It just depends, depending how many books you're expected to sell. But the great thing about you being the one who's uploading your book personally to the bookstores is you can change the price like tomorrow. It doesn't matter. They will not stop you. Okay, so the hardest part I think for writers is the marketing because that is something that a lot of writers may not be as interested in doing, but we are all social in this room. We are all webby and we're already there. Um, so some of the things that we're already doing for our businesses, for our personal lives, are things that you would do as an author. So a website, a blog, a social strategy, obviously. Um, the SEO for the book description and the book title are super important, and those are the things that will control whether your book shows up and, you know, when people are searching for it in the different algorithms for the ebook stores. So keep that in mind. Um, also the reviewers and ratings, if you can get a lot of people to review your book when it's released and say nice things about it, very, very, very good will help you boost your future sales and visibility for the book. And then if you can create an email marketing list of people um, who are opting in and you know saying, I choose to keep up with updates from you as an author on your website, that is awesome. And those email marketing lists, all of these techniques are things that people have told us are working for them as really prolific self-published authors. Um, of course, you still have to do the same in-person things you would do with a normal publisher. Uh, the same earned media, sending out press releases when you're giving a talk, sending out press releases when your book is published to the local media, uh, different things like that, blogging, guest blogging. Uh, but there's one other thing that I think is lesser talked about, and that's pre-sales and crowdfunding and pre-marketing. There are a couple cool platforms uh, nowadays that will let you do this piece of it too. So you can get people interested in your book before you write it, which is awesome, so then when it goes out, they can buy it. Uh, so Unbound is one of those, and another one is uh, Pub Slush. And these are both places where you can either raise money or audience for your book before it's published. Unbound? Unbound. And mm -hmm. Pub Slush. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And then, because it's so cool, you can also even digitally autograph your book. So this is something, two places, autography and autograph will let you do that. So you're not losing anything by not like going with the traditional, you know, print book, um, you can do this digitally too. And then um, this is who I am. I will tell you, I will not, I am not interested in helping you, I'm not interested in charging you money to do a lot of services for you with your book. I'm interested in shortcutting the process for people uh, in the way that I've done in this presentation. So if you need help just knowing what to do at a certain stage, I'm glad to be contacted for that and I'm glad to give you, you know, essentially some, some great advice. Um, but that's that's where I sit. So, anyway, um, questions at all? I don't know where, how we're doing on time. Yeah, sorry, I can't get a late. Um, I have a few publishers who's approaching me to, to, you know, write my book, mm -hmm. and and so far, the contracts that they've been sending me really kind of shows like, oh, you, you know, there's all these requirements that says, okay, you can't publish another book like it. That you know, we control any edits that you do. We have to edit your book, blah, 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 you know, basically, you know, give us your soul, blah, blah, blah. Right. 
And so I kind of turned them down and started writing my own book. And I'm, and they're now coming back going, well, you know, but you get these benefits, you know, where we promote your book and all for the lousy five thousand dollars they give you up front. It doesn't seem like it's in a really good deal. So what, why a publisher still alive? Because they basically told me and said, look, you know, we're going to be able to sell your book, and good luck trying to sell it yourself because there's gajillion publishers, and we have the system rigged so that unless you come to us, you can't even get it on Amazon. So is that any of that true? It's not true that you can't get it on Amazon or you can do all of, you can get it in the bookstores. The yeah. question is, are they gonna sell more books than you are? And the honest answer is nowadays, some publishers are not, they are not giving you the huge royalties you used to get to write a book and take a year off or something and do that. Mm -hmm. um, and for that amount of money, you can probably make that back for sure, you know, selling yourself if you market it. Now the thing is, you will, as a self-publisher, you've gotta do everything that publishers used to do. You gotta do the editing, you gotta do the marketing, you gotta do the book conversion, or you know, this is an inexpensive way to do that. That is the piece that usually stands between writers. You need that. That would cost you thousands of dollars is the conversion of the book. So if you use this, you're taking that out of loop. So you don't have to have a lot of upfront expenses mm -hmm. um, in order to do it. But the, the thing is, a conventional publisher has all of these restrictions and usually it's a very rare. Hugh Howey, who's probably the best known self-published author, did a great piece on how few people ever get a publisher. You are very fortunate that they somebody wants to publish your book, but generally getting the attention of a publisher, even if you have a great book, might take you a year, after which they might take another year or two to produce it. So like you said, a lot of people are taking their destiny into their own hands, and that's a personal decision. Um, do for that amount, it's probably easier than someone maybe a little more than that. You know, if someone's coming to you and really wanting to publish your book and they're offering you a good deal or you're able to negotiate a good deal for that, that's great. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. If somebody's willing to pay you a hundred grand to write a book, well, you know, you should probably take it and then self-publish your next book. <laughs> but, but at the same time, there are very few people out there who are willing to pay you 100 grand to write a book, and even if they did, they're not doing a lot of the marketing they used to do. It's very the way we've always done it. You know, we're going to put you on a book tour. We're going to have you do some book signings. It's not as effective as it used to be. Then they, you in this room might be more knowledgeable about social and digital marketing than some of the big legacy-minded publishing houses out there. So it's up to you, but that's kind of why people are going in this direction. Yeah. Well, and you had said originally that most books. I mean, only 7% of books sell more than 100. Mm -hmm. So if he's, I mean, if the ideal price is $4 and you sell 100 books, that's $400. And it's not even that because there's a royalty in the middle of that, but that's why, that's why a lot of writers are not inclined to self-publish or they're scared to do it because they know they have to do the marketing. They have to take time out of their writing mm -hmm. and they've got to be on Facebook and they got to do the marketing, but then you're in control of how well you do that. If you don't know that somebody is really working for you back at that publishing house either. And part of the reason for that is because there is, like everybody is self-publishing and not all of the books are good either. So, so some of those books shouldn't sell more than 100 copies. So yeah. again, there are people, and I interview people all the time um, for prospects who are doing, making a great living, you know, self-publishing, you know, the romance series or whatever. People who used to work with traditional publishing houses who've said, you know, forget it. Like I'm doing better on my own. And there was another post by Hugh Howey's um, blog, Author Earnings, where they did a study that showed basically self-published authors, you know, the good ones, had the potential to make more money than the traditionally published authors as a whole. Um, so different, it's again, it's a personal decision, but if you're willing to do the marketing for your book and you're able to use like this wordpress -y type of a platform to do the conversion file, and you think you're a good marketer and a good enough marketer or as good as a legacy organization is gonna be, I think there's no reason not to, especially if you don't have like a $100,000 book deal in your hand. Yeah. Uh, I'm a book coach, and I just want to offer a plea. If you are writing your own book, please get somebody outside to prove it for you, edit it, because I have seen so many horrible mistakes. I just read a self-published book that was actually in the library, huh. and there oh, were words left out, left and right, um, a four-letter word, not a bad word, but a four-letter word that was not the right word. Obviously, they let the thing type itself. There's so much of that going on. I mean, I've actually, heaven forbid, I actually wrote something into a, a book because you needed that word that was left out. So there was so much going on with that that 
your mind sees what you want it to see on the paper. Mm -hmm. But you've got to get somebody else to give you that feedback and make sure that if you want something that's polished. I had a book of a um, gentleman who was a doctor. He wrote this vanity book. His travels, how he almost got killed by this tr truck that ran him over. It, was, it looked like a very poorly done kid's book. It was horrible. I didn't want to say anything to insult him because I was interviewing him for a newspaper story I was writing. But it was really, really bad. The photos were all faded out. It didn't look good. It, it was just ugly. Even the paper was bad. And so here's a doctor. He had the money. He could have done it well. So I, that's my clue. Yeah, and I think that's that's a good point. If you're not an editor or you don't know editors, it's always wise to have somebody, somebody who's not your husband, not your somebody who cares about you, somebody objective to at, at minimum read your book, help you know, I know one person who was a journalist and they are well known journalists. They actually put their book up and said, Please help me crowd edit this. Mm -hmm. Like so the crowd edited his book for no, it was great because all of his crowd was journalists. They that's a good thing, but yeah, if it's right. not, that's almost as bad as using spell checking your software. You've got to get a professional. Yeah, and, and you and you can. And there there are there are companies nowadays too. What I suggest, because I am a former editor, and I will tell you that it's not worth it to any of you to pay me what I charge to edit. That's so I'm just going to be real. Um, it's not. It's not if you're going to self-publish. But what you can do is make sure you're paying by. Make sure you're, the company you go with is very straightforward about how they charge you, so you know upfront how much it's going to cost. Editing a book, there's two types of. There's like ten types, but there's two big fields of editing: developmental, which is what you need when you're writing it before you're at the end, and proofreading, which was what you need at the end for sure. Um, so if you need a lot of developmental editing, if you're not a writer by trade. If you're not a journalist who knows how to structure these things, you know you want to hire the right type of editor at the right stage of the book, uh, where they can be of use um, and not just fixing top level things when really there's a, it's a huge mess that needs you know that they should have told you about. Uh, and then there's also some companies where you can pay by the page for either of those types of editing, so you can buy exactly what you need. Um, so have a conversation with whoever you're going to hire about what they're going to do for you, how long it's going to take them. How much they're going to charge you over the long term? How you get a real estimate? Um, and I found that even being on the other side, I would say, "Wow, I just, I, you know, I have to charge you for my time, but I feel bad that you're honestly. I, I edited one book that was so bad it took me forever, and I really, you know, I really felt like this. Maybe this book shouldn't even be written because I, I would have to rewrite this to make this okay. You know, so so at any rate, yes, um, that's a great point. And I think there are, are we out of time? Um, okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wait, so let me take someone who wasn't. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you have a, you, with the in book signings or the in, in, in person signings, where would people go to do that? So traditionally, mm -hmm. with an author I'm working with, mm -hmm. I've been told by several bookstores that they have to have it in print, they have to review it before they allow you to even come in and do a book signing, which to me is kind of silly. Then they want to charge you to stay to put the book on the shelf. Then they want to take the book off the shelf and take it with them. I'm going, stop, what the heck? So find so another venue. Find someplace fun. Find a restaurant. Find a coffee shop. Find a, Screw the bookstore if they don't want to host the book. Right? right? Yeah. Find that's something good. cool that will bring people okay. out. And that's about leveraging, like, what do people want to come out and do that's fun around right. your book? People want to party. People want something beyond just the book signing to create a buzz around it. So if the bookstore won't do it, bypass them. Okay, good job. Yeah. Anybody else? No. Okay. Then I'll take you. Um, since I haven't published a book before, and I have a, I was told, okay, before you go out and start writing a book, why don't you be like, uh, like, uh, uh, just blog about your stuff and then convert it to a book, right. which I thought was kind of weird. That why are you putting all this material out now? So I'm no, kind of wondering. It's, to me, I thought it was a good idea to go do that, and people were saying, even if I see the blog, I'll still buy your book. Right. So and it's actually free advertising, but exactly. they were helping me edit it, and I'm just sitting there, I don't get it, you know, if I'm going to sell you a book, why? <laughs> because, think about it, so you're creating an audience by doing that blog, and you don't have to put your whole blog on in the book, but you can export it pretty seamlessly and then delete the parts you're, or add to it, if that makes sense. Well, that's easy to do that, right? And you're also repackaging it, thinking, you know, think about it, it's a convenience of a format. Maybe it's more convenient to read your book in an ebook format when someone has disposable time on their device than it is, um, you know, to read your in a blog format. Right, when they're reading, and maybe they want to read it all at once. You're still providing a convenience through the form of a book. It's a different medium. Um, and then you can reach more people who may have heard of your blog but never really read it, and then they just want to sit down with you on a Saturday and read your thoughts all in one place. I mean, there's still a service in there somewhere. I 
Anyone else? I print my. I have some. But I think you answered it. You answered okay. it. I have someone that just wants some like graphic art. art for now. But you answered that about how to hire someone. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. But I. Others. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's not right now, but if you give me your card, if anyone wants it, I'll email it to you. So just give me your card before you go. Sweet. I can just send you an email? Yeah. Yeah, you can do that too. You can send me an email. So do you work for them? Um, I consult for prospects to some degree. Not, it's not like a full-time job. Um, and they're not paying me to do this. Like this is so I missed at the very beginning part of it. I heard them saying about the style sheets, which I don't have. Okay. But I do do a blog. Okay. That I was telling them that at the end of the year, I usually take my blog and I convert it into a spiral down self, and I sell it to my clients. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So that would, this would be perfect. And I know what you're talking about. Sure. I do for you know. Yeah, uh, I don't think about it. But it's a bitch. Yeah, I can always find that way. And it's not going to look like that. So you don't want to use words because word, word is not going to translate like that. I know it does have, but it it might on a spiral basis, but not on any. Not when you're doing it. You would need a sign to translate that. Because I said no, the way she was serious. And you don't want to do that. Sorry, the words are more pronounced. You want to. That's why you want to use the sign reading. So that's like great if you want to photocopy it using you know, the old school. I want to photocopy my book. You can totally do that, but that is not the way to get it done. I have to follow with that because I charge four bucks for a book because it's specialized information so they are consulting. And lots of people might pay that for specialized information. And they do. Like textbooks go for that. You know. Yeah, well, you know, real estate books just go for hundreds of dollars. could be a Hundreds of dollars for just spiral down copies in a real binder. If you can charge it. Well, and I do get that, you know, get that. So I'm having a hard time, like, that's translating it down to three ninety nine. They can do a press release right. saying, "What do I put into my three ninety nine book?" But it's also not even about that. It's about I've already sold, sold this thing. Like I'm repackaging this thing to make even more money off of it. Right. And the more sometimes the lower the price, the more people buy it. And it's a take it yeah. an experiment. You can say, do people buy it at 40 bucks? Do people buy it at 4 dollars Do people buy it at 10 dollars Take your old book, sell it for 40 bucks, and then sell specific chapters in it. Okay. Yes. So you've got like ten e-books. Exactly. Yeah. Four okay. And now you've got ten e-books. Okay. 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 No, it's five dollars each. And you can buy the special. Right. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah. I want. I want. Yes. 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 I'm sorry we came in late. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, because I'm enjoying it. I'm a programmer. I was, I was actually looking quality. at making my own thing very much mm -hmm. like the press books for authors to be able to just get online, put their books out there, format it for them. It does exist. I don't have to do that. So, so you take your word, you take your word document, but inside the style sheets. Yeah, uh, you're what, so you can do it one of two ways. You can copy and paste all that chapter by chapter into press books. Um, but first, you want to run it through like a text editor so that it's pure. So the okay, no, word, word has all this crap right, that you can't see. Right. So you put it. You can either cut and paste it into the text thing and then into press books, or you can go back. It kind right, of style your whole, what I would do is I would, the styles menu is just in four. It's super easy to find once you found it. And you're like, oh, why wasn't I using this? So then you like select your whole manuscript, make it paragraph style, undo all the formatting, you know, unbold it all, whatever. And then go into chapter one, chapter two, those headings, use the styles menu to make them H1, H2. Does that make sense? And then, then up, it literally instantly upload the Word document on the press page into like 40 chapters. Wow. Thank you so so much. I really exactly. appreciate that. So and is that yeah, there was a tour with the two, right? Uh, there was a. Uh, I don't know where there they was a. Oh, where is that? Really? 
Yeah. Wow. My last piece of it. Yeah, there's a there's a USB part. Yeah. Is it this? Yeah. Over the summer, I was just going to put it in. Oh, lunch? There's a food truck downstairs, and there's some other places close by to eat also. Just revealing food. What's up, guys? Real cheese. Yeah, it was working. So it must be here. Yeah, I'm yeah, 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 yeah,